KMR Rotary Engines, welcome back to the channel that's got some brap. So we just finished this collaboration project. Um, it's a factory rebuild, basically a restoration project on a stock 20B that would be out of the Cosmo Mazda, which never came to the United States and kind of had a somewhat limited production run. So I think it's actually very rare to at this point, um, almost 20 years after the car was produced, to be restoring a stock motor. And I think when you talk about like classic hot rodding or classic cars, there's a lot of restoration projects occurring. But in the Mazda rotary realm, most builds end up being performance related. And on top of that, most of the time when we see 20B motors come to the shop, it's because they've had a catastrophic failure. This was one of those rare cases where the customer has a beautiful OEM factory condition Mazda Cosmo and the motor was slightly dropping in compression. And so as good maintenance, the motor was brought in for a complete OEM rebuild. And uh, if you've watched in some of the previous videos, we have talked about some of these components. We did a comparison talking about 13B versus 20B rotor housings. We talked about some of the internals like the rotors and uh, the fact that really the, the 20B, since it was uh, produced in the 1990 to 1995 window, um, has some of the characteristics of the late model Turbo 2, which would be the Series 5 Turbo 2. So as you can see the front cover, is a uh, um, it's got the uh, crank angle sensor sorry working on the brain there the crank angle sensor that drops in the front cover versus the reluctor uh, style crank anger set angle sensor and it's also got a turbo oil return that's in the same place and basically the same front cover as your series 5 turbo so on the front cover, you see stuff that's reminiscent of the Turbo 2, but when it comes to the block components, um, like your side and end plates and the port shape, it's a lot more like the FD3S. So characteristics shared in these unique motors um, from both the uh, prior Mazda RX-7 and the RX-7 that was... Uh, getting ready to be introduced in 1993. So some overlap of when these Cosmo engines were produced and the awesome uh, 93 to 99 Mazda RX-7 or 93 to 95 if you're in the US. So this motor, since it came in for a complete stock overhaul and it was in good condition, we were able to bring this motor back to almost a 100% original condition. We did not have to lap the side housings. It was low miles. All the bearings got replaced with OEM bearings. Um, all of the side seals, springs, corner seals, apex seals uh, were opted as OEM components. And I think there's many reasons to do that. When you're building in a OEM motor or an OEM car or a stock configuration car, uh, all of the components that Mazda used, made, produced are fantastic. And they have some of the highest mileage uh, potential of components, especially when you're talking about apex seals. So there was no reason to go to any of the aftermarket seals because the goal here is simply uh, reliability, longevity, and OEM performance. So all OEM, uh, OEM parts, gaskets, water seals, new rotor housings. Um, and again, because the motor was in such good condition, we were able to reuse the internal rotors, uh, shaft, and uh, main gears, stationary gears, and center bearing gear, main carrier gear. Um, so there was no necessity to replace any of those larger hard components. So that really did keep the uh, overall cost of this motor down. There's obviously inherent cost in buying new 20B rotor housings, new bearings, uh, rotor kit and gaskets. Uh, a lot of the times the aftermarket stuff is slightly cheaper, but again, we weren't looking for aftermarket performance. We were looking for OEM performance. So in this case, to ensure reliability and longevity, again, we went with uh, 
all of those OEM components and built the motor to OEM specs. Now, as I talk about a lot on this channel, when it comes to uh, bearings, side seal tolerances, uh, balancing, we opt for Mazda speed specs. We still consider those an OEM spec as they reside within the OEM tolerances. They're just a narrower window spec um, in regards to what is allowable uh, on the assembly side and the wearable side. So we just keep things a little tighter according to the book. Um, and I think I've mentioned that in the past. So overall, just a really clean build, a really nice build. Uh, the fact that these motors are now 20 plus years old, it's always nice to see a really good example of a 20B. And it gave us the opportunity to talk about some of the components and the overlap of generations. So if anybody has questions, um, we're actually working on a few more 20Bs here at the shop and some other really unique rotary engine projects. And I'll do my best to continue to uh, talk about the specs we build to, um, why we do things, um, and what it takes to uh, do some of these motors. And, and there is some uniqueness to the 20Bs. I think it's a good opportunity to talk about this. Uh, there are specialty tools that are generally required to work on the factory three rotors. There's a Mazda specific tool to separate the two part eccentric shaft because it is a two piece shaft in, in the Mazda three rotor. Um, and there is a specific specifications in regards to how the shaft is reassembled, pressed together, and what those specifications and tolerances are. And um, between KMR and Mazda Tricks, we've done at this point a lot of three rotors. Um, if you're not familiar with Mazda Tricks' history, they actually had a three rotor drag car about 15 years ago. And uh, while I was working for Mazda Tricks for about 15 to 18 years, the drag car was one of our racing projects. And so that really gave me the opportunity as an employee as, and as an engine builder at Mazda Tricks to experiment a lot with racing 20Bs. And then that experimentation was continued uh, with my own projects like the Formula Drift cars. And so at this point, uh, I definitely like to appreciate the uniqueness of the 20Bs and appreciate the fact that I've been able to work on so many and, uh, and definitely uh, like working on them. They're not an easy motor to work on. It's not just an additional third of a 13B. Um, there are uniquenesses to the plate, uh, cleaning procedure, specs. Um, and like I said, even uh, this is an interesting one. Um, even though we're using factory 20B rotor housings, uh, some of the generational differences between the A, B, C blocks had different oversized studs. And uh, at this point, there's only one rotor housing offered through Mazda. So there was actually machine work required on this front 20B rotor housing just to fit it, fit it into this OEM block. But uh, that's something we've been aware of at Mazda Tricks and at KMR for a while since we do, do quite a few of these motors. But uh, again, it's in the uniqueness that uh, I think uh, I often overlook because I see these motors all the time. But uh, the reality is uh, specialty tools to work on the eccentric shaft, um, specific specifications that are different than the 13B counterparts. And uh, in some cases, even available parts need a little work depending on the generation of the motor. So I think that's about a brap. 20Bs are awesome. I've said it before, if you're lucky enough to have one of these motors, they're unique, they're rare, they're powerful. And uh, I think they're part of the iconic nature of the rotary engine and uh, Mazdas, I mean, how cool is that? Three rotor from the factory. All right, that's a wrap. I gotta get back to work. This motor's gotta ship out. Its customer is awaiting. And uh, by the time I put this video out, I'm probably gonna be doing some formula drift stuff. So make sure to watch the channel, check out the website, 
buy some KMR merch, check out the porting templates, and uh, if you need any parts, let me know. We're always full of OEM parts and aftermarket parts at Mazda Tricks. That's a wrap. <laughs>